hello students today i am going to deliver a lecture on satellite link design it is unit number 6 so in this particular unit the main leaf focus is given on how to design the uplinking as well as downlinking now let us talk about the content of this particular session so i am going to cover the very first thing is the basic transmission theory of the transmitting antenna as well as the receiving antenna next we'll talk about what is the system noise temperature how it will be going to affect the satellite communication the important parameters such as figure of merit and g by t ratio of the antenna or satellite communication after that we will talk about the expression of the carrier to noise ratio and the expression of carrier to noise spectral density ratio which is represented by here c by n will be considered as a carrier to noise ratio and c by n not will be represented as carrier to spectral noise density ratio and finally we will see the steps of how to design the satellite uplinking and the satellite downlinking now let's start with our session with the very first content that is basic transmission theory so let us talk about the basic transmission theory now under this basic transmission theory we have already discussed the amount of power received by the earth station from the satellite will be considered as a fundamental of the understanding satellite communication now let us consider the amount of power radiated by the transmitting antenna source is p to the base t that is pt in watts and that radiates the this particular power uniformly in all the directions so that is why this particular antenna will be considered as the isotropic antenna and the power will be considered as eirp that is effective isotropic radiated power now we have discussed that the distance between the transmitter and the receiver is simply the r meters and that is why based on this we calculate the flux density that will crosses the receiver surface f equal to the amount of power transmitted which is pt divided by 4 pi r square where why we have taken this 4 pi r square because the shape of the transmitting antenna is spherical and the unit of this flux density will be represented by watts per meter square so in this figure as we have mentioned this is a transmitter antenna which is spherical in shape which radiates the amount of power pt in watts and will be considered as eirp effective isotropic radiated power it will radiate the power in all the directions 360 degree that is why you can call this as an omnidirectional antenna and now see the amount of flux radiated towards the transmitting antenna so this is the shape of the transmitting antenna and the area of this particular transmitting antenna is a meter square and uh, the receiver antenna is separated from the transmitter antenna at a distance r in meters and the amount of flux radiated and the amount of power received is totally based on the gain of the transmitter as well as the receiver antenna so we need to talk about the gain of the transmitter as well as the gain of the receiver antenna also so the transmitter antenna can radiate the power pt watts that can drive the lossless antenna with the appropriate gain gt so we need to consider this particular gain of the transmitter antenna for calculation of flux density Uh, which is separated by a distance r meters from the receiver side so that is why our updated equation flux density f equal to pt into gt upon 4 pi r square which is represented by watts per meter square now the product pt into gt that will be considered as effective isotopic radiated power that is eirp so if i want to represent the eirp in db so simply i need to add pt into the gt 
so the amount of power transmitted plus the gain of the transmitter antenna and the combination will be considered as simply the effective isotopic radiated power now let us see this particular statement if we had an ideal receiving antenna with an aperture area of a meter square then we would collect the power pr that is amount of received power in watts which can be represented by it is the multiplication of the flux radiated into the aperture area of the receiver antenna so f into a will be represented as the amount of power received and which can be represented in watts now let us talk about a practical antenna with the physical aperture area of a meter square will not deliver power as given in above equation so what is the meaning of this particular statement the amount of power that can be influenced on the area of the receiver antenna is different so if the amount of energy incident on the receiver antenna sum of the part of the transmitted power which can be incident on the receiver antenna that can be reflected away and sum of the part can be absorbed by the lossy component as well and based on that we have the next nomenclature as an effective aperture area that is a to the base e in uh, which can be represented in such a way that a equal to eta times a where a is the total physical area of the receiver antenna and eta is the aperture efficiency now let us talk about this eta for parabolic reflector antenna now if i am talking about the size or shape of the antenna so for parabolic reflector the eta can be varies between 50 to 75 percent and for horn antennas it can be approximately up to 90 percent so the power received by the real antenna with the effective aperture area that is a e in meter square is now we can write the expression pr equal to amount of power transmitted pt into the gain of the transmitter antenna gt into the aperture area of the receiver antenna a e upon 4 pi r square which is represented in watts and let us consider this equation number 3 now we know that the fundamental relationship between the gain and the area of antenna will be represented by gain equal to 4 pi a e upon lambda square now once i have this particular equation with me now from the equation 3 i'll be putting the value of a e in the equation number 3 and the newly equation new equation becomes pr equal to pt into gt into gr upon 4 pi r by lambda square now this denominator term will be considered as the your total path losses which will be represented by lp and mainly the amount of received power is depends on the pt gt and gr now here pt is a transmitted power and gt and gr are the respective gains of transmitter antenna as well as receiver antenna so if you want to increase the amount of power received means sensitivity of receiver antenna then we need to increase this particular term that is pt gt into gr and we need to minimize this particular path losses that is 4 pi r by lambda bracket square so the expression of received power equal to the multiplication of earp into the receiver antenna again divided by the path loss so if i am going to represent this particular expression in decibel so whenever we can have this particular square bracket it will be represented by this particular value of pr in dBs, which is expressed in dBs. so pr equal to the addition of earp plus the receiver gain antenna and the your path losses which is subtracted from the particular ARP and gain of the transmitter antenna and the respective equation of ARP, GR and LP will be represented in this way so there might be a problem asked on calculation of ARP, the gain of the receiver antenna as well as total path losses and there are certain given terms provided which is a lambda effective area the distance between the transmitter and the receiver the amount of power transmitted and the gain of the transmitter antenna so from there we can easily find out these three parameters now the next one the final equation 
as we know the total path loss will be contributed is the addition of the four different parameters the very first thing is nothing but your attenuation in atmospheric that is the la that is attenuation in atmosphere next one is the transmitter antenna loss receiver antenna loss the propagation loss and once you add it and subtract it from the amount of power which is transmitted plus the gain of the transmitter antenna and the gain of the receiver antenna you will be finally getting the receiver antenna power now the next topic in your satellite link design is the system noise temperature and g by t ratio this particular system noise temperature is one of the important parameter uh, it will going to affect your satellite communication so what are the sources of the system noise temperature and uh, how it will be going to affect on the satellite link design and how we are going to calculate the g by t ratio now let us see in details now what is the system noise temperature so this is the amount of noise generated due to the circuit and the propagation losses and the the noise figure of the receiver and uh, the system noise temperature incorporates the noise power radiated into the receiving antenna that can be from the sky ground as well as the galaxy then the question comes in the mind that how we can going to determine the system noise temperature because there are certain number of active as well as passive devices are available in your receiver system now let us consider at a micro frequency is a black body with a physical temperature tp degree in kelvin generates the electrical noise over a wide bandwidth and now the system noise power will be represented by the pn that is in this noise power also will be represented by capital n equal to k into ts into b where k is a boltzmann constant which is having a value 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joules per kelvin multiply with system noise temperature and into the bandwidth of the particular signal that is b so the system noise temperature we required the importance in your generation of noise power and what is the importance of this noise power because ultimately our goal is uh, goal is to find out the carrier to noise ratio so this particular noise power we need to subtract from the carrier power and we can consider the carrier power is nothing but your signal power so just like a noise power we have another term as a noise spectral density which is nothing but the amount of noise power pn divided by the noise bandwidth which is represented by b and this will be represented as n to the base o and not okay so this will be represented as the noise spectral density so therefore we can represent n not equal to k into ts into b so k into ts into b will be represented as this noise power and divided by b so the bandwidth get cancelled and only we are getting the term n not equal to k into ts so this is a very important equation we require for calculation of carrier to noise ratio and how we are going to relate the carrier to noise ratio with the g by t ratio because we are ultimately we are talking about the figure of merit of the receiver now let us talk about the g by t ratio of the earth station so for this we require one equation that is carrier to noise ratio it's simply the carrier signal will be represented by your receiver signal and the noise signal will be considered as your pn that is your noise power so c by n equal to pr upon pn so pr is carrier power and pn is your noise power and if we see now take the reference of equation 5 and 7 now let us see equation 5 now equation 5 is nothing but the amount of power received that is pt gt into gr upon 4 pi r by lambda bracket square this will be the amount of power received and the equation 7 Uh, will be nothing but the noise power that is k into ts into b the multiplication of three different factors and based on that we can subtract the value of pr and pn in this equation so our rearranged equation of carrier to noise ratio is pt gt gr upon 4 pi r by lambda whole square divided by 
k into T s into B. So this term will be represented as PR and this term will be represented by the noise power. And once you rearrange the equation, so I am just rearranging the equation in such a way that because my ultimate gain, uh, the goal is I need to relate the C by N with the G by T ratio. Now I am rearranging the equation P T into G T into G R upon so I am writing this term inside K into T S into B and this term outside so 4 pi r by lambda is nothing but lambda upon 4 pi r raised to square. I have taken this particular term to the denominator and I have taken this term at the denominator of this term. Okay, And finally now I am separating this gr into ts separately. So gr by ts into the remaining term pt into gt upon k into b here pt into gt into k upon k into b into lambda upon 4 pi r bracket square. Now my aim is I want the relationship between carrier to noise ratio and the figure of merit that is g by t ratio. So this term I am considering this as a constant so that's why I have written here the c is a constant. So c by n equal to gr upon ts into c. So ultimately I can say carrier to noise ratio is a function of g by t ratio. Okay, so therefore C by N is directly proportional to GR by TS so because we are considering C as a constant. So from that we can say that G by T that is G by T ratio is known as figure of merit and it indicates the quality of receiving sat uh, satellite earth station and has a unit of dB per Kelvin. So it will be ultimately uh, once you have this G by T ratio we will be able to see what is the amount of quality of the signal that can be received by the receiver that now let us see the equation to find out the expression for carrier to noise ratio that is c by n as well as carrier to noise spectral density ratio c by n naught now carrier to noise ratio will be represented by it is the ratio of received power by the noise power so we know that the received power is simply the addition of pt plus gt plus gr minus path losses and now minus this noise power is nothing but k into t s into b. Now all these terms I have written in square braces means this is these are represented in dBs. So rearrange the equation now p t g t plus g r minus l p now I have separated this k minus t s minus b. Now we know that k is a Boltzmann constant which is a constant value and if we calculate this value in dBs it will be calculated as minus 228.6 dB watts per Kelvin plus, uh, by hertz. Now I am simply putting this value over here. Now our new modified equation becomes the C by n equal to PT plus GT plus GR minus LP minus TS minus B now this minus and this minus it becomes plus 228.6 now this is the final equation for calculation of carrier to noise power ratio and now in the same way we know that how to find out the carrier to spectral noise ratio now simply in this particular noise power the this particular bandwidth term is absent okay so only it will be having k into ts now see rest of the things are same pt plus gt plus gr minus lp so this particular term will be considered as the received power minus k into ts will be represented by the n naught which is considered as the noise spectral density okay and once i am rearranging it now this the pt is same gt plus gr minus lp minus ts now this minus now i am re putting the value of the k that is a boltzmann constant now this minus and this minus becomes plus 220 now this is the final expression for calculation of carrier to noise spectral density density ratio so in examination point of view uh, you, we need to write the expression for carrier to noise ratio also the carrier to spectral noise ratio or instead of having the expression the problem on calculation of carrier to noise ratio as well as carrier to noise spectral density ratio might be asked.